ये उनके पास पहुंच गया था ना
वीडियो ऑन करना पड़ेगा क्या मुझे एक सेट इधर लगाए बैग ये वाला बैग रख दूँ
a very good morning to all uh, am i audible just just to check yeah a, a very good morning to all sanskriti school of engineering puttapatti welcomes you all to the day 2 of the fdp program the short term training program sttp series 4 we are on day 2 of the program and this is uh, aict is sponsored and it is organized by department of computer sciences engineering with the title role of artificial intelligence in engineering applications yesterday we had a wonderful session uh, with two speakers uh, dr c shobha bindu and dr azad today we are at having another yet interesting session uh, by dr manoj tarbari uh, and i'll give a brief introduction about him Uh, he is a b e m e m b a phd uh, in information sciences he is a senior member i triple e usa and chartered engineer and uh, he is going to talk to us today on i i request i request the participants to please mute i request all the participants to please mute i request all pl please mute if there are any technical hitches any hang uh, kindly uh, uh kindly uh, apologize i apologize before only if there are any technical hitches uh, we have to bear with this uh, in the online sessions uh, i request uh, i request the participants to kindly mute i request all participants to kindly mute kindly mute please uh, uh, kindly mute because that is disturbing the session please yeah uh, moving on uh, uh, introducing to the audience uh, about dr manoj tarbari uh, he is the profile uh, is uh, very interesting and he is such a learned and experienced person he has agreed to join us today on this session i take privilege in uh, uh, taking you through his profile Uh, he is a phd in information science uh, he has worked under the guidance of dr baskar kar associate professor department of technology birla institute of technology ranchi and his thesis title was development of software using activity theory and unified modeling uh, modeling language he has done his post graduate in advanced computing from uh, cdac pune he has done master of engineering in digital systems from mn nit alhabad uttar pradesh and uh, his specialization was software engineering data communication mis and mobile communication he has done his bachelor of engineering in electronic engineering from amravati university india and uh, he has specialized in communication engineering analog digital systems real time system and uh, sir has two patents kql social media based framework for community mobilization during the post pandemic the second patent is del multi objective optimization based decision uh, decision on support system buying mobile handset sir has guided master four master projects and uh, he has guided three management research projects and sir has guided phd and three students are pursuing phd with him presently he is working as a professor of information software engineering artificial intelligence and machine learning sir has taught data communication computer networks he also technology department bbd university was also a guest lecturer bad i take privilege in inviting you sir for the session 
Hello. We are we are happy pleased to have you, sir. I I hope our audience will have a wonderful. Are you able to hear, sir? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Central. Sir, Kumar. I hope our audience will have wonderful session over to you, sir. Fine. Yeah. Dr. Thank Manish. you. Th thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. <clears throat> Dr. Central Kumar, Principal, Sanskrit e School of Engineering, and uh, Mr. K. V. Prasad Reddy, HOD CSE, and all the organizing committee members who has given me a chance to deliver this. Uh, lecture it's a privilege for me also to have wonderful experience from the <clears throat> south uh, audience so before starting uh, ai and machine learning i'll be uh, giving you a brief introduction about what is ai and machine learning that you must have already been done in the previous uh, sessions also but to start with i'll give you just a brief overview what is basically the <clears throat> AI and ML is all about. And then we'll move on to the applications of AI and AI various pro projects which are running currently. Then we have machine learning applications and its types. Then <clears throat> based on the algorithms, I have developed something which I'll be discussing right now in this presentation. And finally concluding the entire presentation. This is the gist which I'll be covering. So before starting the presentation, I'll just go through a revision session on AI and ML. It deal <clears throat> the basic definition as given by Luger and Stable Fairfield. The AI is a branch of science that is concerned with automation of intelligent behavior. Right? How? How we can make hello how we can make the things more intelligent if i want to make something intelligent i have to imbibe some intelligence in that particular thing right so <clears throat> that can only be done if we have a feature called as artificial intelligence that is why the word artificial is being used what you are doing you are doing an embedding of the intelligence in the particular product or a body that is working as a human being close to human being right that is why it is termed as artificial intelligence basically it's a subdivision of computer science which has recently picked up very much and uh, it is being very well used in various automation systems as well as in our daily life also we are using it frequently for example we are using it in washing machine intelligent tv intelligent air conditioners all are being controlled and driven by a <clears throat> artificial intelligence chip which is embedded in the <clears throat> system so so here we will be discussing how and the step-by-step -step progression of artificial intelligence into our daily life by way of embedding it into systems and then developing another branch of artificial intelligence known as machine learning which is also a deri derivation from the artificial intelligence which is more focused on bio inspired computing or you can say biology right because it is being all the, the it, uh, machine learning consists of three basic things that is neural network you have a fuzzy logic systems and you have the genetic algorithms so all this is being covered and derived from the nature and it is also termed as nature inspired computing coming to artificial intelligence back it consists of various things like developing a cognitive systems deep learning robotics machine learning natural language pro processing and chatbots <clears throat> you have seen that various universities are using chatbots and various industries are also using chatbots whatever your query is it will you just type it or you just say to him then it will automatically respond to your 
query searching from the entire or retrieving from the entire database of the set of rules which you have already written that is the beauty of chatbots so how it will determine it is determining based on the natural language processing right the keywords are being identified and it is picking out the respective solution set from the database now here i have shown you uh, a description of various branches of artificial intelligence that is predictive analysis which uses <coughs> part of the deep learning machine learning then we have a speech which is dealing with text to speech speech to text then we have image recognition that is machine vision right then we have natural language processing jetbot is the best example where you can even talk and siri in I ios where and google itself is have providing a search engine based on speech recognition so all these things are already being in the development stage <clears throat> while as expert system was previously being developed as a core branch of ai right in the case of mycin which was first expert system developed in which the patient has to write something and based on that a feeding is being done and based on that the medicines are being generated a prescription is being generated this is this was the first mycin <clears throat> expert system which was developed initially then we have planning and optimization every organization which is having a multi locations is need uh, to be planned accordingly in terms of four basic factors marketing production finance and hr so all these <coughs> are to be coordinated and coordination is required by the help of artificial intelligence right then we have an, another field robotics japan is the leader in this particular area so <clears throat> just to give you an insight about machine learning it's a computer program that is set to learn from experience e we defined experience e with respect to some class of task t and performance measure p if it performs task t as measured by p and it improves with the experience e what happens this is a very very basic definition and a, we can say a formal definition what happens that whenever i am giving a task to a machine what it does the task t is being performed and the performance is based on the various set of rules that we have embedded previously in the machine right and it is that we call it as experience like human we human do right we have an experience set <clears throat> given by experience e and such that it is being performed to the minimum level of p means if the machine is designed for a specific task then it has to perform at particular level that is p that is known as performance measure p if it is not performing according to the performance measure p then there may be a problem we have to look into our system so if it is there then it has to perform it according to the performance measure that is the basic definition of machine learning and each time if a new situation comes in it has to store it and retrieve it if similar situation comes in that is the basic idea of machine learning right <clears throat> it um, encompasses various sub categories basically there are three sub categories in which we can divide you must have already done in your previous lectures that is unsupervised supervised and reinforced learning unsupervised is basically you are given a target and you are given a time frame now you have to complete it how you are going to do it you are providing with the specific tool set there there won't be any continuous upgradation or learning part from the user's perspective or the machine's perspective okay <clears throat> then comes your supervised learning supervised learning is what every time you put a tutor in it right which is teaching it at a particular interval of time period right 
<clears throat> that is known as supervised learning. If the program is moving far away from the desired output, right? Desired output that is performance P. If the performance P is deteriorating, then we have to put a pulse of teaching to the supervised learning system. And what happens? It again comes back to its normal position. Then we have the last part that is reinforced learning. Reinforced learning is also a type of a supervised learning in which we are forcing the machine to directionalize or channelize itself to desired outcome. <clears throat> if it is not in the desired outcome state, then we have to <coughs> train it to reach to the desired outcome. Here we have things like real-time decisions, robot navigation, learning task, skill acquisition, and game AI. Right, game AI is based on the moves of the opponent. You must have seen in your <coughs> AI example. Fine. Uh, then we have, I have categorized it into genealogy. That is, we have artificial intelligence. From artificial intelligence, we are able to derive machine. Machine learning is having artificial neural network and deep learning. But the main aim <coughs> here is to exploit the concept of neural network in our system. Now we will see the brief overview that is industry impact. The industrial impact consists of cybersecurity, retail, construction, supply chain management, business intelligence, education, transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, and many other things, right? Similarly, artificial intelligence is also having various sets like real-time universal translation, virtual companions, autonomous systems, machine learning, deep learning, neural network, pattern recognition, natural language processing, chatbots that I've already told you earlier. <clears throat> now, based on the deep learning, we have around 60 startups. To name a few, you can see there are a number of startups which are being coming up because of the enormous potential that we are able to find it. Even as a student of PG or a PhD, you can start with developing something based on deep learning and you can get it patented. Once you get it patented, you will be able to restrict other people without your consent. And for consent, you, they will be, you will be providing, have the privilege of providing the licensing. So you can see the advantage of learning that thing in the fast mode and you can incorporate very well in your masters or phd work and you can earn the royalty also if your uh, institute permits you to go in for the patent part right now <clears throat> we have uh, brief categorizations that we have mentioned here the strong ai and weak ai in strong ai the computer has mind right while as in weak AI, it is only focusing on specific problems. Agar humne, <coughs> if it is being designed for a particular specific task only, it will not take its own decisions. This, then this, if do this, if this happens, then do this, if this happens, then do this, like that, simple. No logic, no ability to learn and incorporate new rules, while as in strong AI, you have some sense like we human beings. You can very well discard or <clears throat> join. Hello. Based on the <clears throat> learning concepts. And this learning is being derived by the help of a neural network. Like we all human beings have neural network uh, in uh, our brain that brain consists of neurons neurons and these neurons are interconnected right so <clears throat> these neurons are interconnected and like each neuron has a capacity to store one bit and together 
they have millions and billions of neurons and together they in <clears throat> contain a huge capacity of processing and storing information that is the thing which we are going to derive in our thing right to develop a artificial intelligence concept now <clears throat> these are some of the typical problems where ai is being applied and it is being used that is uh, optical character recognition right you must have seen the e wahan website or a chalan system what they do is they take a snapshot of your uh, any violation which you do in the traffic and it recognizes your number plate of the vehicle <clears throat> maybe in any font or any type right so it filters out and then recognizes from the its data set just say for example if i write 4 it may be a synonymous to a half cut a right now how it will distinguish that it is a or 4 it is based on the character recognition set in terms of the neural learning atmosphere which we have written <clears throat> then we have handwriting recognition the same situation applies here also you there are people who have different set of red handwritings and they write on their own then you have a face recognition where the neural network has considerably gained experience in identifying the criminals by identifying the faces from the database and picking out first they will recognized they learn something change and then they learn <clears throat> this back and forth is known as back propagation network that you will see you must have seen in the machine learning algorithms what it does it learns from the database and as soon as it reaches to the target and it it stops and then move to the next stage so similarly we have virtual reality image processing motion interpolation and pixel art scaling algorithms where the image <clears throat> sensing is being achieved you have various other applications like image scaling photo tagging photo and video manipulations diagnosis game theory and strategic planning game artificial intelligence and computer game bot natural language processing non linear control and robotics <clears throat> now the main part which we will be seeing is concept mining nowadays is bio inspired computing concept mining data mining knowledge representation semantic web email filtering right bio inspired computing consists of soft computing that is divided into three basic parts that is <clears throat> neural network first part is artificial neural network where we are taking the help of nature in from the brain for example <clears throat> as the we have brain in our body we are embedding the same thing developed in the terms of the hardware and embedding into a system that is artificial neural network then you have a fuzzy logic systems where there is still uncertainty that if i say today is very hot that means i am talking about a range of temperature maybe of 30 to 45 degree centigrade for me but for a other region people for example russian it will be very very hot so the categorization will depend on person to person so how to freeze <coughs> this particular situation and such that the machine is able to understand that i am talking about this particular segment is being developed and channelized by the help of fuzzy logic systems then you have a genetic algorithms genetic algorithm here deals with mutation part like we have we derive our chromosomes from our parents x and y chromosomes here also we try to mutate with various decision sets right for example if i search something best engineering colleges in andhra pradesh right so it will first categorize best engineering colleges then 
localize it to Andhra Pradesh. That is Y. So or X and Y will be combined to give you the best engineering college in Andhra. Right. <clears throat> so this is how the genetic algorithm works in searching. So this is a very, very uh, special branch of, you can say, artificial intelligence that is bio-inspired computing. And it is upcoming in various concepts. Then we have a concept mining. Concept mining give you the various set of <clears throat> analogies in dealing with the marketing buying behavior of the people. Similarly, in data mining also. Then you have a knowledge representation where you write certain set of rules using logics. Up till now, you must have done in your uh, master's or PhD program the logic parts. <clears throat> that is how we can very well represent something in the form of a rule set, in the form of a logic. <clears throat> right. Then, hello. Then you have semantic web. That is also a very, very uh, nascent area, still being in the development stage. Uh, there are various uh, search engines which uses semantic web to <clears throat> for their queries. They are web of web, right? And they, for example, if I book a ticket from, say, Lucknow to Chennai, and it is via Hyderabad. From Lucknow to Chennai, I'll be <clears throat> from uh, Lucknow to Hyderabad, I'll be going by flight. And from Hyderabad to Chennai, I'll be going by bus. I have booked it from, say, mytravel.com. It is providing a combined services to me. Now, suppose a bus service is being dropped from Hyderabad to Chennai due to some reason. Now, it has to search a new link or a new communication media for me that will land me from Hyderabad to Chennai, right? Such that my travel from Lucknow to Chennai becomes smooth. So how it is done? It is done by the help of a semantic web, which is automatically finding from the other websites of which is providing the bus services from Chennai to Hyderabad. So <clears throat> automatic linking is also playing a very, very important role in terms of the travel agencies or various other agencies which are taking part in the this area. So semantic web is nowadays playing very, very important role. Then you have a email spam filtering automatically by the keywords NLP using NLP, we are able to identify which thing is a spam, which thing is correct for us. <coughs> right. <clears throat> then you have robotics. Robotics is basically dealing with cognitives, cybernetics and development robotics, then evolutionary robotics. Cognitive, I have told you that it is based on cognition, how we think. All the thinking part is being embedded by the help of how we think. And then cybernetics, all the things, all the parts are to be embedded. Then development robotics and evolutionary robotics means that every time it is seeing a new situation, then it has to remember it for the future reference. That is evolving, evolutionary approach. Every time we learn, we <clears throat> acquire a day-to-day -day experience. For example, you are doing this course of AI and ML. ML. Then you are acquiring, you are acquiring a new knowledge. This will be adding your experience or enhancing your experience. For the next time, if somebody asks you what is ML or what is this application part, you are able to confidently tell him that it deals with this, this, this areas, right? That is. Every day we are learning something and we are storing back in our brain for our future reference that is known as evolu evolving. So evolving part has to be there when we are developing a robot, <clears throat> right? Then we have hybrid intelligence systems. I have told you that it is semantic web type of situation where it is procuring from the other sources. Then intelligent agent, software agent plays a very, very important role. Up till now, we have seen normal software programs 
which are run running according to the program right they are not having any type of a database or a something which they can take the help of while as intelligent agents are those which can take online help if they don't have <clears throat> normal database they can take online help for example if i am developing a firefighting robot using intelligent agent that's a part of ai and ml so <clears throat> what it does we have various sensors across the room where these robots are <clears throat> working in in the individual capacity and they have the functionality of seeing the temperature rise seeing the smoke and then adding on the sprinkler at the particular location and if they feel that there is fire which is rising very fast and the temperature is rising very fast and it is beyond their control they will give a signal to the adjacent robot <clears throat> or adjacent firefighting system inside the room itself it's a big huge hall suppose so the intelligent agents are not at all autonomic uh, are also atomic in nature as well as they are social agents they are collaborating with each other they are working in a group to complete the task of extinguishing the fire that is the beauty of it right <clears throat> so it is all possible by the way of developing or writing a program in the form of a artificial intelligence language known as bdi believe desire and intention anyway <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> i have done uh, lots of work in bdi format first of all you have to believe that you are able to do then you have a desire then you have an intention intention is a doing word where you do something right and complete the task so believe desire and intention are the basic parts which of the ai or or you can say the latest in the machine learning buzzword where <clears throat> it is being incorporated to the normal software which is making it as working it as a software agent and this software agent work not only in autonomic mode but also work in collaboration to develop something known as group task or intelligent task right then you have next topic that is litigation litigation is what litigation is dealing with legal aspects uh, for example if i am a lawyer and i have a case of a murder so i i know that i have to file it in this 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 section now there and the remedy will be this 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 which is a decision which is being taken previously we'll be discussing in detail in the uh, later sections now <clears throat> and similarly for the oil and gas oil and gas companies spend colossal amount of money right it spends colossal amount of money uh yeah sindhu ji uh sindhu uh, dr sindhu i'll be discussing it in the later part in the way developing the transport system where it is reducing the carbon dioxide emission and traffic analysis you must have seen the latest current vehicles they all have a chip right <clears throat> they all have a processor inside it which is programmed for fuel injection system intelligent fuel injection system in which the exact based on your driving from say x point to y point it will tune it the acceleration and fuel inlet into the system accordingly and it will remain keep it at the particular raised level but as soon as you drive in a location where it is very much crowded then you may be driving on second and third gear or a low or high in automatic gear mode then as soon as you switch on to the low one it will the processor will automatically judge that a shift has been done from high to low 
that is you are driving in a crowded area where there you may be needing a little bit more on the pickup side but as soon as you reach to the highway you need to drive <clears throat> with a higher acceleration part because and the clutch part remains i mean plays very very lesser role so it adjusts the fuel injection accordingly thereby reducing the <clears throat> oil consumption significantly so <clears throat> based on the sensor and driving habit which is being judged for a particular time period they have a set of rules which is embedded in a chip and based on that it will be raising it and providing the necessary fuel injection inside it that is the <clears throat> basic idea of driving in in a form of a energy efficient system secondly you have an <clears throat> traffic analysis uh, hello hello secondly you have <clears throat> traffic light systems you must have seen that during the entire day you see a pattern of traffic that during peak times for example say 11 to 8 to 11 you have a high density of traffic right and during 4 to 8 you have a high density traffic so the traffic lights are to be programmed according to the situation of 8 to 11 and 6 to 8 in between if i say that one minute is the stay at the particular traffic location so so <clears throat> it should be reduced during afternoon hours when the traffic capacity is less why waste fuel by waiting it at the traffic signals right that is the basic idea of variable traffic light systems secondly they are using in metro cities they are using cameras to track the traffics and based on the tracking and the traffic density they judge based on that the traffic lights are being managed accordingly so this is by this is also a role of artificial intelligence in saving the fuel and making it more greener or energy efficient in the systems secondly <clears throat> we have uh, various other areas like government how government is being taking advantage of ai we have seen by using citizen digital identification systems where you have aadhar and all which are being frequently used and ai is able to detect you have a sibil when you take a loan you have a sibil system hello which <clears throat> tracks the loans which you have taken from the based on your pan card right the cibil system so as soon as you approach for a new loan system that sibil will be keeping track record of your spendings and how you default in your loans or credits based on that it will be judging and giving the guidance to the banks whether to give that particular person loan or not so <clears throat> likewise we have finance where the financial fraud prevention credit decisions i have told you just now all are being taken care we have uh, various applications in the manufacturing systems where you can see the maruti and all they have a fully automated plant with very less, less labor interaction in the entire automation plant than the healthcare i will be discussing each and every segment in detail then you have a social networks how social media has come up and intelligently you are able to locate criminals criminal activity and you are able to track based on the postings or thing eduthirukanga artificial intelligence pardon hello Sir, we are sorry for the disturbance. So you can continue, sir. Oh, okay, okay. I thought somebody is asking question. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, okay, <clears throat> you can identify from the social network also that based on the postings, 
that there is going to be something that is being done in Kashmir issue also. So we are uh, the government is able to track based on the posting levels, and these are not being tracked manually. They are being tracked by the <clears throat> software agents or the software programs that we have specially customized for this particular situation. Then you have jurisdiction that conducts legal research and the lawyer client relationships. All these things are being taken care. So starting with the detail analysis, I'll give you an overview in faster mode. Uh, you have a crop and soil monitoring system where you put a sensor and on a mobile device, you are able to judge what is the health of my crop without even going to the particular location, right? That is known as GI enabled EI. Hello, <clears throat> GI enabled NL AI. Then agricultural robots are being identified where they do the particular things like watering, manuring, all these activities. Then you have a predictive analysis that this time the crop needs this, this, this feature. Then this weather report is saying this much. Predictive analysis is a combination of uh, Google weather report and your sensors, which are embedded in your form, right? They both are collaborated. By way of Google weather report, you are able to know whether the current week will be humid, dry, or sunny. Based on that, you are able to predict. And in case of a drip irrigation system, the designing is done in such a way that the watering or the manuring has to be done accordingly. So we use predictive analysis by using the weather report and the sensors, which are acting as a software agent or a multi-agent systems. Then you have a greenhouse automation, then automizing systems. And uh, Berlin uh, has developed a system called as PEAT, P-E-A-T. Uh, that is Plantix application called Plantix that identify the potential defects and nutrition defects deficiencies in the soil through images, right? The, the peat is a, now being uh, uh, developed in in-house also in India also by uh, ICAR. <clears throat> they are also developing their own systems by which they are able to develop the health record of the soils. And they are able to find out what are, what is my soil is having nutrition, uh, lacking nutrition. So based on that, they will be providing the necessary manure and supplementing for the necessary upgrade. That is the age nowadays. Without, because natural, from your naturally, you cannot see what is my deficiency of my soil or the farmer cannot see. And basically, he is not literate enough. So you are you have to provide him a system, a simple mobile system, where he can go and track his health monitoring of his farm. That is what the government is trying with the help of some initiative by opening up some farming centers, which provide the health records because they are retrieving all the sensor data and GI enabled systems from the data centers. <clears throat> Then illegal fishing is also there in some parts. Are also being tracked by the satellite image and based on the cluster samples, they have a tagging system, which they have to keep on their board and boat. And then it is being recognized by the uh, tracking device that whether the boat is legalized for the fishing or not. Then you have a cyber security where we have developed security information and event management solution, right? Using AI in NLP. Uh, for example, you, I've told you about various things like spam filter, credit scoring, 
network intrusion detection systems lot of work has been done in network intrusion detection systems that in case of developing an efficient firewall systems then you have a hacking system phishing wishing all these things are being taken care of. automatically it will be able to identify that is a phishing site it's a wishing all the, from the phone call itself then you have a cyber security ratings which are given to the organizations then botnet detection fraud detections all these things play a very very important role in terms of ai application in terms of cyber security and we still feel that we are lacking in this particular area because still there is a cyber fraud if you go to the newspapers every day you will find five to six cases of cyber fraud maybe by phishing wishing or cloning still we have to go various authentication levels in order to upgrade it in the <clears throat> to prevent it from the cyber fraud then you have applications in uh, education sectors where we have ambient informatics that information is everywhere in the environment and that technology automatically you have a qsx automatically you can touch a screen based it just to your personal preferences and you have every student depend on names and identities and other areas and the students are allowed to customize from the server we have developed and they can go in online of those lectures on their mobile handset by just logging into our, our department of it systems so this is a trial and tested study that we are going in our college and many colleges have adopted it making the things to be more and more personalized more and more personalized then you have an ai based tutor for a student to get an extra one one on one help that is if at all a student is unable to do something you have various uh, content management systems which are being developed by or a tutoring management systems developed already being developed they are extremely using ai techniques like byju's and all they have their interactive system such that the user feels that it is specially designed a tutor is there especially for him or her but it is ultimately the ai which is running at the back end right which is running at the back end and providing the necessary help that is the various aspects like virtual facilitator smart content data accumulation personalized learning proctoring chat campus adaptive learning all these things are related to the campus and believe me it is very very efficient as compared to the normal teaching you can have see, see various universities they are all using flip method some content is being delivered physically some content has to be delivered online or using some artificial intelligence technique such that the student in case of any difficulty can channelize himself or herself and dig out his clear out his doubt as soon as possible that is a part of the adaptive learning that we are focusing right <clears throat> then you have finance uh, you can see from this diagram that artificial intelligence have played a very very important role in terms of analytics part that is banking uh, studies risk modeling biometrics fraud detection underwriting chatbots rpa and report generation so uh, <clears throat> all these are play, uh, playing very very important role and for a normal human being analytics cannot be done singly or manually there has to be something running at the back end which is providing you the necessary data processing at the end and that is why you are able to achieve something and you can give a help to the bank so all the banks are now using this 
and they are all doing underwriting work. If you process, go in for a loan, they will be doing underwriting about you before proceeding further. Right. You in <coughs> trading, you must C and BSCs, they all have automatic system, right? Even if you are have to purchase something, some shares, you automatically keep it that if the price is running at 100 rupees, you put it at 99 and that as soon as it comes down to 99, then book my 100 shares at the rate of 99. You don't have to track it. You just have to set it in your interface, which is provided by the investor and investment banking. And then automatically you, what you will observe that as soon as the price of that particular share drops to 99 value, automatically you will have 100 shares in your account. You need not do anything. You can go and do your office work just by setting your thing in the morning. Just a job of five to 10 minutes. That's all. And you have done all your trading for the entire day. Similarly for the selling part, if I say that current price is 98 and it is going down, right? So I can take a risk of some level and I set it at 97. As soon as it goes below 97, then sell all my 100 shares. So you see that it is all done by the help of something which is known as artificial intelligence in the particular trading sessions, which is being done. Then you have an online lender system. Underwriting, I have told you that there's a website known as Siebel, C-I-B-I-L, where every bank uses those uh, things. And every loan, every credit card you take, all are automatically linked with the PAN card. And the PAN card is giving the best information about how many loans you have taken, what is your default pattern, how many days of has expired. And based on that, your defaulting pattern and lending rate, or are you a frequently lend, frequent lender or not? I mean, if you have taken from X bank, then you proceed after defaulting, you proceed to the Y bank, then you proceed to the Z bank. That means you are a habitual defaulter. That is known as underwriting, right? That is a homework which is being done by the bank who is providing you the loan, right? And they check your credit rating. And that credit rating is being automatically done by the help of a civil website, which is using extensively using the uh, application of AI enabled systems. It has got various machine learning tools, which is tracking your repayment period and defaulting patterns, right? Then you have an audit where automatic audit in banks previously, you must have seen that as soon as 31st March arrives, I mean comes, they take two, three days of banking half off because they have to do audit, right? Two, three days of banking is being wasted just because to keep and manage their accounts, which is nowadays a matter of one or two hours. And it is being completed on the same day and date itself. That is the beauty of using AI in the audit part. Automatically, it generates an audit report and based on day-to-day -day or monthly audit report, you are able to match your credit and debit balance. And in case of any dis discrepancies, you are able to channelize it. Just not on 31st March, even before 31st March. So that is the advantage. You have uh, various set of operations in which the AI has been used. I have already told you earlier. Then how the government is taking uh, part, I mean, use of AI. That artificial intelligence paired with facial recognition for the mass surveillance in case of any dubious activity or frivolous activity, they are able to track. In Singapore, if you throw anything after eating on the roadside or anywhere, they track you. They are all entire country is having cameras fitted. And as soon as you throw it, you, your face is being recognized and your 
social security number is being generated and you will be fined of say $10 or $50 accordingly, according to the gravity of whatever you have done. So that is known as mass surveillance and various countries are using it. Hello. Mm. Hello. Uh, then you have AI managed traffic systems, signal systems, which I have told you earlier that based on the traffic intensity, based on the entire day, 8 to 11, we know that it is a high peak time and 6 to 8 is a peak time of traffic. So based on the timing of the <clears throat> lighting system will be changed. Nowadays, the various countries are using variable message sign boards, VMS, we call it. And they are also driven by the captions which the cameras takes on various crossing points, right? And based on the traf uh, captions, the variable message sign board is being inserted as you are approaching two, three kilometers earlier. As you are approaching towards the traffic signal, it will tell you that this, this area is having high traffic. So kindly divert to this. So it is very well managing traffic during heavy traffic hours in various cities in America also. So, <clears throat> and you can see from the Google itself, they are using AI technique to determine the satellite images and based on the density of the image, they will also guide you that it is a red, orange, and green based on the traffic sentence intensity. Here, it is being low, used as in a, in a closed loop and the traffic lights are being changed. Then you have a military applications for the communication center networks. You use various uh, <clears throat> devices to determine the movement and operations of the enemy. And based on that, you can plan accordingly your logistics and <clears throat> your movement of the army. Even the drones are very, very upcoming field in the case of uh, machine intelligence and AI. In case of army, they are using drones to identify the upkeep of the army, where they have made a base and all. I mean, they are able to track and they are, to, they are able to pinpoint it and destroy the particular location. Healthcare plays a very, very important role. You can see that <clears throat> from the uh, points that it is uh, used in identifying, even the doctors are using the analysis part left uh, leaving the analysis part to the computer. They take your CT and MRI, they do MRI and based on the inference, which is being generated by the CT and MRI, the doctors are guiding even the, they are also guiding you, the patients or doctors, the MRI based on the intelligence embedded in the CT machine and MRI machine. Okay. And it is very, very useful in determining the cancer progression nowadays. The progression of the cancer is being utilized by the help of a 3D imaging and the 3D image along with giving the image, it will tell you the various points where the doctor should focus and identify. Identify <clears throat> the problems which are occurring and in how many days this is going to be fatal. This cancer is going to be fatal. So what are the necessary steps in case which is required by the uh, for the by the doctor for the patient in case of he should go in for the chemotherapy or for a, another type of treatment <clears throat> like operation amputation of the entire part. So, and it started way back. It's not a new concept. It started way back in case of a breast cancer identification. Even we are doing some projects also, and we are doing it in the BTEC projects in the case of identification of breast cancer. 
it's a free database and number of researches has been done in case of breast cancer so google has come up with the google deep mind algorithm right which is uh, determining the progression of the breast cancer in women <clears throat> and it has a success rate of 93 to 94% you can imagine the sensitivity and they are now polishing up so that towards moving it to 99% or somehow like that so you can imagine a normal doctor cannot do analysis in this much level that after two years it will progress in this right it can just anticipate but the machine can give you an accurate and far better result by using the concept of ai and machine learning if you have a progression you have some type drug creation we are all facing pandemic of covid nowadays drug preparation is mainly the main criteria right so <clears throat> we are doing it by the help of artificial intelligence or you can say machine learning and we are able to predict very well before even developing it and spending colossal amount to <clears throat> we are able to develop it accordingly Oof. hello
Okay, uh, starting with there's some problem with the internet connectivity. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we have uh, 10 basic applications that AI cloud change with the healthcare. <clears throat> you can see that robot assisted surgery is having a potential value of $40 billion. So you can imagine the content of requirement of AI and ML in current stages because of the shortage of doctors, they are now migrating it to uh, robotic operations. And the success rate is also very, very high during the trials. Then you have a legal part, the e discovery part, and there is a software known as Manupatra, which is now being frequently used by the lawyers, judges, and all. You just click on the particular situation and you will get the output immediately, right? That is uh, being used by in the form of a compass commercially programmed widely used in US courts. Then uh, various sets, formal methods of legal reasoning, computational mo models for argumentation and decision making and legal reasoning in case of a multi-agent systems and executable model for legislation. When you file a case, then you deal with certain procedural steps. This is being covered by the software known as e-discovery and Manupatra. And they are helping the guidance. In the case of <clears throat> new discoveries then you have service sectors service sectors needs recruiting hr recruiting you must have seen that nowadays various companies infosys tcs or any wipro any company you just load your bio data and automatically what you see is after a few days, you receive a call or you receive a rejection like that. You, based on your keywords and the requirement matching, they automatically match with your current project requirement and it is being observed and you are being given a call accordingly. This is also uh, very, very prevalent nowadays in, there, there's no concept of hiring HR team it is all being done on automatic mode by identifying the contents given in your CV. And based on some keywords, it is able to click the right person, helping the AI or HR person significantly. Secondly, you have online and telephonic customer services that is known as electronic virtual assistant, where you we all have seen up till now that type one, you will be directed to this particular location. Type two, you will be directed to this particular location. Type three, like that. I mean, and finally, you will be reaching to telecaller. Ninety-nine percent of the queries are being resolved in electronic. 
it has reduced the workload of call centers significantly and they have reduced their manpower and thereby the reducing the cost then <clears throat> impact in our daily life we start our day with what after doing brush or and after having breakfast and all we just open as soon as we jump out of our bed we open our phone and check our whatsapp messages or messages or mails before doing anything right so it is an addiction you can say that ai has implemented on our daily life it's an addiction secondly of the smartphone of any age you can see even the older people are being addicted to it it's ease of use and you have an information or communication with all your family members all your professional members at one point of time in the morning you are if you want to communicate something you can just type one message and it goes around that is the beauty of ai used through the smartphones then you have a security and surveillance even my house is covered by the security and surveillance of cameras and i am able to check it on my mobile device that who is entering my house who is exiting like that so it's beauty of ai again then soft social media platforms i have told you that based on the comments and progressions of <clears throat> in facebook or twitter the cyber cell is able to track that something big is going to happen right so it plays a very very important role the cyber cell doesn't have much people but they keep track by using incorporating various types of software systems embedded and extracting the information in a <clears throat> social media platforms and they are successful all things events which are going to happen and they are able to track it beforehand just by tracking the movements of comments in the social media even i have uh, developed some type of a software which can track automatically in buying behavior i have applied for the patent also and uh, then we have navigation intelligent navigation you have seen yourself that you go to new place you take a ride the ola people the uber people they use the navigation system to track your location so that's the beauty of it it even guides you the latest information then you have a e-commerce banking sectors and smart homes where you can track the <clears throat> entire home and make it smart before going to your home you can just start your air conditioner from your mobile device by sitting in your car you are able to turn on your air conditioner right this is the smartness which you are able to achieve by the way of <clears throat> ai then you have media and e-commerce this is also un not untouched by ai even today you have various music generating algorithms and based on that they are able to track that hello hello internet problem hai
Sorry for the inconvenience. There's some problem with the internet. Okay. <clears throat> then you have uh, music generation, Ghana.com, things like that, where automatically on my listening behavior, they will be helping me or prompting me that Mr. Manoj, listen to this also. Manoj, listen to this also, like that. So this is a prompt based services using the concept of artificial intelligence. And it is also known as MuseNet, right? Where the classical music and all are being used. There are a number of things where it's, it's supporting this type of guided type of music uh, library. Then you have uh, media and e-commerce in terms of arts. Uh, like Wordsmith is a natural language generation platform that can transform your data into insightful narratives, right? Based on that, it converts it into set of narratives. You are able to identify the narratives from it or derive the narratives of it. For example, Watson analyzed all the information and delivered inspiration to human artists who were charged with creating a sculpture. So <clears throat> it is no field which is untouched by the AI. You have, you name it and you have it in encompasses with the AI. Even the film industry is also using extensively AI by using the special effects, the special uh, dialogues, you must have seen various movies, which is having special effects like Bahubali and all. They are totally based on special effects, right? Making hero more heroic, right? By using the techniques of artificial intelligence, film industry has massively used this type of systems. Then you have manufacturing systems where the, based on that, the sensors, you are able to identify and the toys and games are also being doubled. Then transportation, I have told you about we find the miscellaneous parts that is the tools auto ml what <coughs> it's a simulation of our brain right so blue brain developing or increasing of the machine by replicating or mimicking the entire brains. How our brain thinks, what are emotions, how in a normal manner, all in Google brain. It is all brain related projects which are going to pick uh, an open source implementation by Numita for cortical learning algorithms are being developed. Right, you can try this. This is good for the PhD students, especially and MTech students for starting their project in learning systems. If they want to do something with the learning part or mimic the brain part, then you have certain cognitive architectures like four caps, AC, ACT, R, XC, Calo, Crest, Kojak, you name it. And there are n number of researchers going in developing the cognitive architecture because Unless until you are able to develop the cognitive architecture, you cannot apply machine learning altogether. Or you cannot mimic human being. You have to have something known as brain. For that, you have to have an extensive study about mimicking the brain. 
then you apply machine learning algorithms or thinking algorithms like we do on it and then you are able to replicate it then <clears throat> coming to natural language processing part where we have gpt3 a 2020 language model has been developed with open ai you can use if you are anyone interested in doing the research in the field of uh, natural language processing they can go in for that is an open ai and written by a human being ai ml it's an xml language then <clears throat> there are n numbers artificial linguistic internet computer entity allies an award winning natural language processing chatbot hai clever bot hai <clears throat> i mean there are n numbers so overall there is a huge potential of uh, ai now some part in the machine learning machine learning is also a part and parcel of ai with uh, agriculture anatomy adaptive websites effective computing banking bioinformatics brain machine learning then chemnorf informatics <clears throat> and citizen science the main part is dealing with the dealing with the three <coughs> basic uh, four basic categories that is supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforced learning right that we will see in the later part you can see from the figure that the supervised learning has a teacher associated with it i have told you earlier right that is in case of any error in the learning rate you are to be guided again and the error is being propagated back such that for, for example if i give you a paper right to which is having around 20 lines and you have to learn it somehow right fine and i will be hearing it after 10 minutes so what you do you try to learn it and if i learn if i ask you you are able to learn only four lines out of 10 lines you are able to learn only four lines less six is your error right now i've give you another 10 minutes and i have told you that you learn these six line in this way then it will be easier for you to learn it then again you come back to me and this time you are able to do much much better and you are able to learn seven lines so the error is only of three lines now three lines is again i told you that you do now this 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 technique to learn it in a faster manner now you again do the work and you again go to the learning rate and <clears throat> this is how you keep on now this time you when you come back after say 45 minutes or three or four iterations these are known as iterations or epochs in machine learning language so after three four iterations you are i found that you are able to learn all 10 lines right as, as i have told you the basics of how to go about it that is the beauty of supervised learning or the advantage of supervised learning in unsupervised learning i have i have given you syllabus and i have told you that you will be having your exams in february now it is your baby it is your problem how to go about your february exam it is your, you are having the books right you are having the time and date where you have to learn it or mature right so this type of learning where no input is given by the te teacher or a tutor that is known as unsupervised learning you are given the target and you are given the time frame to achieve the target that is the learning rate and you mature it accordingly right then you have a reinforced learning learning is learning it is similar to supervised learning with a reinforced learning <clears throat> reinforced signal which is required when we are maturing away from the normal when there is a deviation which is significant if i told you that you have to learn physics but you are learning 
physics rather than physics you are learning all the higher things about physics not on the course points so i will give you a reinforcement signal that till and unless you reach to my physics curriculum and this will continue then you have an unsupervised learning where applications can be used the unsupervised uh, learning part describes dna classification social network market segmentation astron astronomical data are medical records <coughs> computational biology then speech activity detection acoustic factor analysis for robot speakers these are very good and nascent field for phd work it is special advice for masters and phd students to go through these areas where you can implement unsupervised learning network computational networks then you have a supervised learning hand written recognition face recognition speech recognition information retrieval operating systems are also having the supervised learning methods you are being provided an upgrade in the form of patches and every time you upgrade your patches right thereby learning with the new attempts in terms of the cyber security in terms of the security of the systems every time the hacker is developing something so you have to upgrade your upgrade yourself and then apply it so ultimately what you will observe that your operating system is also learning with the new trojans or wars which is facing which is being faced in their daily life so the, it is the responsibility of the company for windows ios they are providing you the latest releases and these re latest releases not only provide you ease of use but also have the ability to learn i mean fight with the latest trojans or cyber attacks have a recommender system which is also a part of the supervised learning you have a database and from there you self customize yourself and then based on that it will guide you as just say for example i have told you about the music part for example if i uh, listen to kishore kumar very frequently so if i have listened four times kishore kumar then on the fifth time it will automatically tune myself to kishore kumar songs right that is self customization programs and part of the supervised learning then you have a reinforced learning traffic forecasting services computer games machinery applications stock market analysis as and when required you are putting a pulse to learn it you are putting a pulse to the system such that you learn it and then give me a decision in the games also it is based on the op opponent's move it is trying to fetch the new set of rules and it is a dynamic nature nature in nature for that you have various set of software libraries right <clears throat> which is to be used then you have various cloud services which are based on these machine learning algorithms and uh, this uh, for example grok and watson is one of the famous uh, machine learning algorithms with prediction grok and watson is uh, free cloud services with which are being frequently used by the various uh companies for the analysis in terms of marketing tools buying behavior credit card rating of particular persons so all these things are being developed and they are providing a special help to various set of companies coming to the concluding part 
uh, I conclude uh, my entire presentation with some basic points like uh, there is a huge AI and ML and uh, various sectors are still remaining untouched and it requires us as an engineer, as a PhD student, as an MTech student in the field of computer science or any other field related to circuit branches to go into the depth of this field and innovations and new techniques, get it patented, get it licensed and you will earn loyalty and your fame will be there, right? So it is not only doing a research and getting a degree, but you will be able to gain very much out of AI and ML if you follow certain new or areas of research, right? The countries, you can see that USA, China, and all the European countries are spending huge amount of money all in AI sector and ML sectors. And today, <clears throat> Made in China 2025 plan has been launched by China. This Internet Plus plan. They are planning to be making it to be intelligent by 2025. And internet ready. Every device. They just put a chip and then they will make it intelligent. And they will be, it will be a part at, to the global community. Right. Everyone can access us. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. I thank all the participants so for patiently listening despite a breakdown of internet connectivity between some times. I'm sorry for that. Thank you very much. Thank you all the participants. Sir, we have some doubts regarding the participate science. Why? First one, how can artificial intelligence improve energy efficiency and reduced emissions? Uh, that I have told you about the <clears throat> latest technology vehicles which are being used, which will automatically uh, reduce the fuel injection system, thereby reducing the emission based on the driving habit of the uh, driver or the owner. If I am driving my behavior, I will be putting a finger on it, on it and nowadays. And uh, based on that, my driving sense will be different and feed it accordingly. And uh, if my wife is driving, then he, she will put a finger and the Mac processor will learn and accordingly provide the acceleration and all the injection systems into the field and thereby reducing the energy of the environment of the fuel injection system. And secondly, we have uh, Honda has developed a technology that if you are driving a car with one person sitting, they have patented also. No else, nobody else can use it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not a name of the technology, but you will find it is written on Honda cars that it is this enabled. So if one person is driving, then they have a different set of fuel injection system program running. If two persons are driving, base injection of fuel in the engine, thereby reducing the emission systems. I hope I'm clear. So we have one more doubt. Yeah. How can both data, sci data scientists and software engineers collaborate to build machine learning system that will distinctively address emotional requirements? Uh, actually, <clears throat> we have uh, various uh, set of uh, social scientists also involved in this particular area where the emotional capability of the persons are being embedded into the machine. That is the only nascent area where it is our machines are lacking. and they need to be upgraded, fine. So <clears throat> our data scientist role here, here comes into picture that it has to uh, track, keep the track of all the emotional aspects of the entire human body. 
and what is happens what is happens to our hormone levels what happens to our brain level in terms of emg eeg ecg datas are being acquired seeing a particular scenic situation then what is my emotional level what how i am behaving to that particular situation right that is being analyzed in terms of the sensor data and this is to be supported by data scientist and as an ai engineer or a machine learning engineer or expert i have to bridge or those datas and utilize it for the analysis part and derive a proper conclusion that how far i am able to detect that i am excited i am a dull i am sober or i am in a different set of moods based on that and i can check my modeling this confusion matrix where i may be false negative false positive or any other situation thank you thank you sir for your okay. information and clarifying our doubts thank you thank you ma'am okay can i leave now thank you so one minute wait a minute sir fine sir uh, uh, dr manoj darbari sir thank you so much for the wonderful session thank you ma'am uh, uh, participants have really enjoyed uh, uh, the knowledge which you have shared and the insights into the artificial intelligence uh, your uh, knowledge sharing on various branches of ai as well as how industries are getting impacted and the technology landscape of artificial intelligence and how startups are using uh, ai this is all uh, something which is uh, uh, very very informative for the audience uh, and machine learning also have detailed so much uh, it was very uh, uh, time taking procedure i know you have prepared thoroughly to give a proper knowledge and information for the uh, the participants uh, we thank you once again uh, from the organizers and from sanskriti school of engineering we thank you i uh, thank you sanskriti school for giving me a chance to have an such a wonderful session thank you thank you sir thank you all thanks all participants again we'll join the session at 2 o'clock kindly be available 5 minutes prior to 2 o'clock thank you